All right, so we've got an upper over here with a two inch, and then there's two inch on the lower here. That's all inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter on all those, and the dryer is also an inch and a quarter. All right, I think I've got all the inch and a quarter that I need. It looks like we need just two pieces of two inch. 61.7 feet total. So we need to probably start with the long pieces and I think that'll make it super obvious um, what's left for short pieces. So today my goal is to get all the face frames cut for all the cabinets, upper and lower, and then hopefully maybe even start to get the pocket holes drilled. So if you're just joining us, we're well on our way to building this set of cabinets. This is the first set of cabinets I've ever built in my entire life. And what we're trying to figure out is uh, do we like this style of cabinets? We're kind of testing the face frame inset door and drawer model. So anyway, we've been working on this for a long time. If you haven't seen those earlier videos, jump back. We started off by cutting all the carcass material and then pocket holing all that stuff together. And then we started working on the drawers. We cut the drawers, we assembled them, we put finish on them, and then we installed all the drawers and assembled all the carcasses. And then yesterday I worked on getting all of this face frame material uh, ripped down and plain to dimension. We still have a bit of work to do to get these cabinets done for sure, but we're kind of taking it one stage at a time and we're taking our time because we're not cabinet builders. And what we're trying to learn from this process is what do we like, uh, what do we not like, what's buildable, what do we suck at building, and ultimately we want to kind of take away from this what do we want in the rest of the house. So what we're working on today is getting these face frame materials, which is this kind of light blue area here, um, cut to size. And we're also gonna to try to work on getting those assembled. So this framed style cabinet is unique. I've had people tell me more than once that these are probably one of the more difficult style because the frame and the doors and drawers are not very forgiving. You've gotta get them correct, otherwise they just look terrible. Here's hoping we can avoid that. Alyssa and I have been kind of procrastinating on the conversation about how to finish the face frames. They are fur. The wood that we're using is left over from our timber frame. And so we feel like it's almost like a tragedy to cover this up with any kind of finish other than a natural finish. At the same time, I think both of us, A, like a more timeless look, meaning white, Wood kind of comes and goes, and there is such a thing as too much wood. I feel like the fact that we even suggest painting this wood is gonna make some people just lose their marbles. There's some thing out there in the world that says that you don't paint real wood, and I think there's some truth to that. Of course, in homes I've had in the past, there was real wood cabinets, and done well, it's beautiful. If, if, A, it fits the house, and B, the homeowner likes it. But I don't think there's any rule that says that wood cannot be painted, and if you do, you've committed some grave sin. So that's kind of where we're going with this, but I am cutting these boards as though we're going to just treat them with some sort of a natural finish and then lacquer them. So I'm trying to remove as much of the knots and imperfections as possible and end up with super straight grain, beautiful wood. Yesterday, we started with a piece of wood that looked like this, very rough, sawn, kind of sun, burnt and such and we've ended up with beautiful pieces of wood like this nice lovely straight grain we chose these boards from our boneyard because the grain profile 
seemed like it would lend itself to dimensional stability and a uh, superior appearance, thinking that we were gonna leave the wood exposed. I keep saying that because we're not completely sold. I think we're, we're, we're leaning that direction, but you know what, there's always that chance when we do a test piece, we just don't like it. So we worked really hard to find dimensionally stable, fairly straight grain wood and um, stuff that was fairly free of defects. The problem is we don't have boards that are completely free of defects, like this guy's got a big honk and knot, right? But we can scavenge in this clear wood here and then just cut out this bad wood. And I think we've got enough wood to do all the face frames just right here. Some of this wood is just stunning. And um, I'm really excited to use this to build cabinets. Of course, playing with finishes is a whole different video. I don't really have a great process for this. For the plywood, we used a software to make efficient cuts. But for this, I don't really have a way because my material is just too random. So I'm just starting with a piece and I'm kind of looking at it, trying to make the best decision about what can be extracted from this piece. Yesterday, we did plane all of this stuff down to dimension. So it's actually already at dimension. And I kind of realized last night before I went to bed, that might've been a bad idea. I'm kind of wondering if, if sanding might be an issue. I guess we'll have to just find out. But one thing I do know is that these boards are just a hair too wide and we did that on purpose because the table saw does not leave a truly flat edge. And so if we try to join these boards to each other at some point, we're gonna find that there's a small gap between the boards which will look somewhat unsightly. So we still need to run all of these through the joiner, the edger joiner, and make the sides nice and flat. And then hopefully, assuming our table saw does a good job here, we might touch sand those ends to make them nice and flat and our joiner does a good job. When we go to put all these face frames together, hopefully they squeeze together nice and tight and they just look good, look professional. So all of our 45s are out of the way. So now we need 31s. It looks like we need a two inch 31. And when they need one, two, three, four, five. So five inch and a quarter 31s and one two inch 31.
I learned a lot through that process. Probably the first and most glaring lesson was make sure your crosscut sled is true to your blade. I'm not sure what happened because I spent a lot of time calibrating this, so I'm guessing in just moving this thing around, it got bumped. And because of that, the cuts were not true. It didn't take me very long to pick up on that. In fact, it was so bad on one of them that my eye kind of caught on, but then I realized I'd actually set it against the clamp. So I was having all kinds of difficulties. Um, spent a little time getting that taken care of, and then the cuts were beautiful. I also figured out that I can actually use my miter gauge and my crosscut sled at the same time, which made this super efficient. I was able to basically make a, an initial cut with my miter gauge, and then I could use the block or stop that I set on my crosscut sled. I figured out that the crosscut sled actually is pretty friendly to setting a stop as long as you're within about 31 inches, which happened to be about the longest cut that I had to make. Kind of just took a little time getting used to it and then making sure that the miter gauge is in fact square to the blade. So I bumped it and apparently it wasn't tight and I got again about three degrees off. And when I set it up against my stop, it didn't look like it was well squared. So just kind of paying attention as I was going along really made sure that I didn't end up making a miscut that I know of. Uh, a little bit of lessons learned with getting everything edged. We're basically ready to start laying out the face plates, the face frames, but I put pressure in the wrong spot. And it's just because I was getting a little bit tired, I think. So there's kind of a front table and then the back table or the rear table and then the blade in between. And just getting a little bit tired, I pushed a little too hard on the back of a piece of wood going through. And because of that, it tipped up and I gouged the back of the piece of wood. I'm gonna see how it lays out versus going back to the drawing board and trying to create more scrap. The good news is we have a bit more material, which is gonna be probably pretty useful if we make any mistakes. Um, but for now, I'm gonna try to make this piece work and kind of try an old cabinet maker's trick, I think, to put it in an area where you probably won't see it, I hope. I suppose it's probably becoming obvious why an overlay style cabinet can save you a lot of time. Of course, there's a couple of different styles. You can actually have a framed cabinet with an overlay drawer and door, so you'd still need to make the face frames. But let's say you went with a Euro style cabinet where there's no frame at all. The box is the frame and then the doors lay over the top. You can avoid this entire step, which could be a pretty big time savings. I'm not really sure if you buy cabinets, if, if these types of cabinets are more expensive, but I imagine they have to be. I mean, how could they not be, given all the extra material and labor involved? So let's lay out the drawer base that we have over there, which is a 24 inch, it looks something like that. And then we've got a five and a quarter that goes in between them and that's just a drawer separator. Nice. This is really what I'm curious about. Look how tight that joint is. Of course, I'm zooming in with a very nice camera, so it's gonna look worse than it probably really is, but I'm wanting to really be honest with myself about how these joints turned out. It'd be really nice if those joints were just super tight and didn't need a lot of work to make them look really good. I just realized I actually made a mistake. This piece here is actually one of the two inch pieces because it overhangs the end panel. So that was close. We almost put that on the wrong piece. So that's actually gonna be this guy right here. He's gonna go on the end there. So that's actually for our drawer base. Well, that's about what we're after on our face frames. So our, our side to side pieces, we will actually be pocket holing. And then the vertical pieces will actually be screwed into so they don't receive any pocket holes. 
I've kind of learned to do a test run on this stuff. That way you can identify problems before you work on your, your game day pieces. I don't feel like this joint is that spectacular. It feels like this is kind of tilting. I can't tell you if that's because of the screw or the wood. It kind of looks like it's the wood. That joint looks fairly tight, if you will, but I think that it might not be square. And so the, the net result, I'm sure you guys can see it on the camera, it looks like this board is kind of going up ever so slightly. So not, not beautiful. Probably a consequence of this face not being square to this face or something like that. Uh, that's probably good enough. I'm sure with some sanding we can smooth this little, there's a very, maybe 128th of an inch lip right there. It's very light. I'm sure that's normal to have to sand these frames to get them to look good, but that little, you guys can see that for sure. It's kind of going away, so not super excited about that. And then this guy is gonna end up basically going right here. Of course, this side's a two inch piece and it should, let's see, yep. So that would actually look something like that. And it makes me feel really good that it looks like the drawer will easily clear the face frame. So looking good so far, not bad for a test run. So I'm thinking let's just build one frame at a time and kind of work through the bugs because this is the first part of this stage of this project that I've done. And uh, I already found one problem. I'll kind of show you guys that a little bit later. Actually make that two problems and hopefully I remember what they both are. So let's work through getting the frame built for that drawer base that's over there already. And hopefully any issues will come to light there. If things are going good, we'll dive into all these cabinets behind me. Well, ran into a snafu on that one. I mean, it's already a narrow piece of wood. I think this is the narrowest piece of wood you can do with this Craig jig, inch and a quarter, and um, split that end out. I think what happened there is, according to the manual on the Craig jig, you're supposed to plunge in quickly and cleanly to make the cleanest hole. And the problem is you go in too fast and you tear out what little bit of grain there is. I'm thinking we might be able to glue that up and just put a clamp on it and hopefully we can, we can save that piece right there. I have a hunch what's gonna happen with this piece is we're probably gonna relegate that to an upper cabinet. We've got an upper that, you know, the piece is gonna be sky high, and so visually that will be hard to see. So we should be able to just grab a different 31 over here and work with that instead. That went a lot better, and I actually feel like the holes are a lot cleaner too. So, I don't know, Craig, I don't know about blasting through there. Maybe on plywood, but see how thin that is right there? I mean, there's not much wood there. So there's our cross pieces, and then there's the drawer separator. So the first problem I identified with my design was the center drawer separator I have drawn in as an inch and a quarter piece. It doesn't make sense that it works, but in the drawing it works, but it doesn't work in real life. So this piece is actually a half inch wider. It's an inch and three quarters. This makes sense. This is a three quarter piece, half inch and half inch, which makes this an inch and three quarters across, right? And in order to make the drawer front uh, identical on both sides, we would have to have a piece like this. But I have it drawn as an inch and a quarter piece, which only overhangs each side of this, what? So it overhangs a quarter of an inch, which that, that means that the drawer fronts are gonna be odd sized. Anyway, I made an inch and three quarter piece to go there. It's not in my drawing, but we're gonna build it like that. And then if for some reason it doesn't work, I guess we'll try to figure out what the heck went wrong. The other thought that I had, you know, when we screw this together, it, it kind of looks like it's a little bit crooked. And I think what happened there is that this plywood is kind of crooked. 
and I clamped it to the plywood. So I think we're gonna try to put this stuff together over on the shopsmith and do our joining over there. is pretty flippin' square, but this cabinet's not. And the reason it's not is we haven't leveled it. So I've attached it to that back wall so it doesn't fall over, and it's kind of tilting that direction. And that's one of the things that this face frame is gonna do, is it's gonna provide a lot, a lot of extra structure to the front of these cabinets, which you don't really need. It's pretty heavy duty already, but we'll have to make sure that these boxes are square when we attach these face frames, because however they attach, that box is gonna stay that way. So I would say that looks pretty stinking awesome, minus the fact that the, the box is not square. Pretty excited, put drawer fronts in there, 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 and we'll have ourselves a cabinet. So we've got the sink and the other drawer base to do, and then knock out the uppers. I think with some help, I can actually get this done tonight. You ready to drill some pocket holes? Yeah. In the warmth. Pocket holes in the warmth. I'm so, so bundled up. It's a little chilly out Just there. Just in case. <laughs> I'll tell you, it doesn't look like much, but that's progress. Feels amazing to have these frames put together. They look spectacular. And it's really satisfying when you put them side by side and they all, they kind of nest together. It, it looks like they fit properly instead of being all wonky, which would be very disconcerting at this stage. That was a fairly quick process having my sister's help uh, was really nice to just drill the pocket holes. It was a lot of repetitious work, so um, that really sped things up. I made a couple of mistakes. I don't know how, but my brain, when I get really tired, gets turned around in 3D, and you drill the wrong thing on the wrong side. And a couple of these frames, well, most of them actually have an orientation. They have a left, right, top, and bottom. And I don't know how, but I got turned around, and it was on a very critical one, so we had to take it all back apart before the glue set and um, put it back together right. So we'll have some holes to fill from the screws, but at least we caught it, I guess, and we don't have to make a whole new frame. Feels awesome to have all this stuff done. This part was super intimidating for me. Like I said in yesterday's video, it's a bunch of new tools, and um, I feel like this stuff is really high precision stuff. I feel like all the joints went together nice and tight. They look wonderful. I don't think we're gonna have to use any kind of a wood fill or anything like that. Probably just a touch of sanding wouldn't hurt um, to get rid of the glue and the fingerprints and stuff. And maybe tomorrow we'll kind of start playing with finishes and see what makes sense. Um, I feel like we've kind of talked about, a little bit about that today's video. Tomorrow, rubber hits the road. We've got to make a decision because we've got to get these painted, I think, and then get them installed. I don't think we can do that in one day. Um, so maybe we'll get to work on some of the drawer stock and stuff. Obviously, this is a very exciting stage. It'll be kind of scary trying to put them on the cabinets because like I said earlier, the cabinets have to be absolutely square when these are installed. So this is kind of like that 
that third leg to a tripod that makes the cabinets super rigid. All right, we got them done tonight. It's time to eat dinner, wind down, and get some rest. Tomorrow, probably gonna be a whole new adventure. Don't worry, cabinets. Tomorrow, you get a face. <laughs>